And welcome back, everybody. We are here to preview and stream straight to your lovely eyes the final match, the eighth, the one we've been waiting for, <laughs> which is going to be between <laughs> um, Flavio Del Pidio. Don't make me laugh, then. Flavio Del Pidio versus Damiano La Barbera. And I, of course, like you did hear me just mention right now, joined by the ever so lovely Mr. Ben Kiriakuru. How are we feeling? We're in the pivot moment to find out who will be the last entry into the top eight place for tomorrow's event yeah i'm really excited and this has been such a great day so so many fantastic players who have done so well in this tournament so far showcasing their skills and we had the pleasure to be able to see every single one of them today and uh this is the last match these are the last two players we are going to be showcasing uh today so uh, we're gonna go Skip over the players, I'm afraid. Uh, some bits of technical difficulty in the background going on that we can't avoid, uh, I'm afraid. So we're going to skip straight into team preview now um, and get this show on the road. So uh, here we are, Costa, take it away. I shall indeed. We see Flavio rocking the Sol Galeo, Spectre, Rotom Heat, Grim Snarl, Porygon 2, and the Tapafini, whilst over on Damiano's side, is going to be going with the Palkia, Ferrothorn, Urshifu, Grim Snarl, Incineroar, and the Porygon 2. We will be observing this from Flavio's point of view. So, how are we feeling about the Pokemon? Very interesting Palkia choice as well from Damiano. Yeah, Palkia, not a Pokemon that we see too often in these restricted formats, and of course, uh, it's tight been quite good uh, not going to be uh, liking to see tapu finney which is something that you don't often to see say too many times when you're talking about restricted pokemon of course both players are going to be supporting potential trick room modes uh, with that ferrofawn and porygon 2 on damiano's okay. side and of course porygon 2 uh, and some slightly slower pokemon maybe that rotom heat form and tapu finney on pado's side uh, flavio's side and of course we have that uh uh, we have that uh, Spectria uh, and, of course, the uh, Solgaleo that are going to be the sort of semi-restricted pair, I suppose. I always think yep. Spectria is a little bit more of a restricted Pokemon uh, coming out. We see both of them in the lead. Oh, both of them in the lead. So, of course, the Solgaleo, Spectria on Flavio's side, and the Porygon 2, Ferrothorn over on Damiano's side. We did see Porygon 2's ability there being Trace. I'm not sure which actual ability was Trace. It could have been either Clear Body or the Grim Nave from the Spectria. Yeah, indeed. And Porygon 2 potentially going to be setting up that Trick Room right off the bat. Ferrothorn, of course, known these days more for supporting Iron Defense and Body Press. So uh, could be content to just start setting up here, uh, start making sure it can do so much damage with that Body Press. Certainly, Sogaleo isn't going to enjoy that. And because this is an open team sheet format, we know that that Sogaleo is not carrying a fire move. Uh, nor a fighting move, which would be the main uh, way of dealing with that Ferrothorn. So, uh, just a Dynamax right off the bat, though. Yeah, Dynamax straight off the bat, wanting to go straight in with momentum to try to gain that momentum versus uh, Damiano, as the Sol de Leo does, of course, go ahead and uh, gain huge amount of boost of its HP, because, of course, Sol de Leo does actually have a surprisingly big number of HP base stats, as the Bulldoze actually comes out right now, uh, will be proccing a weakness policy on this Sol de Leo, which is going to be threatening so much damage. Mm -hmm. over onto Damiano's side. Depends on which target it's trying to go for because I'm not sure if it can actually even pick up the K on Porygon 2, but that's left to be seen as it goes into the slot and it does mm -hmm. indeed not pick up the KO whilst being able to boost its defense as well as Spectria's by plus one of the stages. Yeah, indeed. And anytime you can do more than 50% damage to a uh, Porygon 2, you're in a great place. I think we yep. saw uh, potential Leech Seed coming out there from the Ferrothorn and Trick Room going up as Ferrothorn uh, gets a little bit more health back uh, recovered by that Leftovers item that it's holding. Uh, so, yeah, good turn there for, uh, really for Flavio, uh, getting all of that damage on the Porygon 2. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though Trick Room went up, he's, it's still going to want to spend some time recovering off that health, and that's going to give yep. Flavio a bit of a window to uh, start putting pressure onto Damiano's side of the field. 
Ooh, as we're going to be seeing that Ferrothorn, just like in the previous game from Matteo's side, setting up an iron defense boost for itself, uh, being able to go to plus two of its defense as well. Foul play dealt so much damage onto the Soldaleo, uh, only to be taken out from that Soldaleo with a max steel spike into the slot for the Porygon 2. Um, of course, we have to take into consideration that Soldaleo did have the plus one defense boost from turn one's max steel spike, as Spectre is just be opted to go for a willow wisp mm. and ladies and gents for anyone that's not aware of it it does in fact affect body press as a damaging move right there it does still half that so if the ferrothorn is going to be trying to go for any sort of body presses it won't be dealing as much damage and more importantly the leftovers will essentially be treated as if it's neutral without it certainly will and of course one of the things to note for later in the game is that spectria isn't going to be affected by body press so uh, spectria can be knocked out by ferroform but you have to kind of wait for the leech seed and that's going to take a long time to happen and of course certainly yeah. not something that you want to be happening while you're taking consistent shadow balls uh, that little bit of chip damage that is as you said costa going to be removing the uh the boost health boost from the leftovers item uh, but we do see here uh, the spectria just go straight for the switch out here mm, actually switches up for the tapu Fini right now uh being able to bring misty terrain on the field thanks to its misty surge ability but i think more importantly maybe wanting to safeguard itself and uh, take a wicked blow from this urshifu as ferrothorn mm. is going to be going for its second iron defense boost uh, being able to bring it straight up to plus four of its defenses right now so it's starting to get very cozy in that little corner as max quake comes out from the soldier leo does target down that urshifu now being able to get a special defensive boost not only on itself but now on that tap of Fini, which did actually switch in as wicked blow is going to be coming out from the urshifu does go into the tap of Fini spot indeed the respectable damage for a pokemon that not only is bulky but also resists that dark typing but um no le oh and we do actually see the leftovers reveal on the tap of Fini as well being able to recover a bit of hp from that wicked blow damage yeah, and that's, uh, g given the, the format of the board, that could be more beneficial than, say, something like a Citrus Berry or one of those, say, Wiki Berry, for example, that, that heals 33% of your health because it uh, looks like Tapu Fini's probably going to be on the field for a little while. A uh, combination of Body Press and Leech Seed is not going to be very quick to remove Tapu Fini and, of course, uh, is resisting both of the super effect of both of the hits that uh, usual types that Urshifu Ush tends to use to attack. Of course, this yeah. Urshifu has got lowered, uh, very low HP at the moment. We did see it get undersped by or outsped by Solgaleo under Trick Room, so yeah. uh, going to have to protect it on Damiano's side. Oh, definitely. As of course, we will be seeing the Sucker Punch actually coming out from the Urshifu. Of course, being very conscious of the speed interactions between itself and that Solgaleo, as a uh, Leech Seed may have tried to come out go into that type of finish slot from the ferrothorn but was met by the protect and the sword delay though goes for an earthquake will be able to pick up a ko onto that urshifu whilst a deal a bit of chip damage and yes it is very minimal damage onto the ferrothorn but any little bit against this ferrothorn is very very crucial even though it did actually recover even more than what it accepted there with damage it certainly did and uh, you know a lot of these games with Theraphorn in it come down to do you have the resource resources at the end of the game to be able to deal with Theraphorn and uh, I can imagine that Rotom Heat is just sitting quite nice and pretty in the back for Flavio uh, gonna be waiting until the end of the game in order mm -hmm. to bring it out but one of the things that can deal with that that uh, uh, that Rotom Heat has been left on the field that's the Palkia coming in for uh, Damiano uh, and yep. the problem that Damiano has now the, the thing that he needs to overcome is that Palkia is going to have to get through a Tapu Fini which is going to be hitting it super effective and potentially having to take some damage from that Solgaleo as well depending on how it's trained so uh, you know, really good position here I think for uh, uh, Flavio just to be able to whittle down everything on Damiano's side of the field that is able to counter that Rotom Heat so Rotom Heat can do exactly what Flavio wants it to do and that is to take out the Ferroform. 
As we're going to be seeing, Damiano actually up to go for the Dynamax on his side of the field. It will uh, be this Palkia, most likely. I don't see any reason for it to be Varathorn, as uh, it is confirmed to be indeed. So, Palkia, no stranger to huge amounts of damage output, Ben. No, no, and it's uh, going to be sporting that uh, potential Max Quake, I think, into the uh, Tapu Fini, which is very important because it does raise the special defense of the Fer Ferrothorn uh, and maybe allow it to take an overheat from Rotom. As we're going to be seeing, the Leech Seed does actually successfully land in the Tapu Fini slot, which did actually opt to go for Calm Mind, and more importantly, it was able to outspeed the Palkia right there. Uh, Obviously, um, maybe in strength to the fact that this Palkia might be very bulky indeed, as it's not been uh, not going to be able to deal as much damage as it would have liked. Because don't forget, ladies and gents, Tapafini did previously switch into a max boost um, that was uh, made. Uh, sorry, a special defense boost that was uh, given by the Sordaleo through its max quake there. And Sordaleo, as you did say, see there, trying to target down this Palkia, but I feel like Flavio recognizing Tapafini Fini might somehow uh, maybe be a way out and a win con in this situation. Yeah, certainly uh, Tapu Fini is one of those Pokemon that does very much need to be uh, preserved on Flavio's side of the field. And uh, that Max Quake definitely not doing as much as Damiano would like it to do. Of course, we have still got the Spectria in the background and we saw the Trick Room there just return to normal. So Spectria is going to be coming in and probably going to be the fastest Pokemon on the field. Of course, it does have the ability to go for something like a Snarl. We've seen Will-O-Wisp already, so, uh, you know, we know, and Bulldoze, so we know it's a little bit more of a supporting set. Uh, so Snarl will be very, very likely to be uh, seen here, uh, and that's going to make it very difficult for the Palkia to be able to knock out either the Spectria itself or the Tapu Fini on Flavio's side of the field uh, without a critical hit. So I think it's a really good position for Flavio here. Uh, and the Ferrothorn isn't, as we said before, uh, going to be able to do anything particularly meaningful to that Spectria other than to launch another Leech Seed on uh, onto mm -hmm. it, which will make it last a bit longer, keep it at high health, and of course, uh, alongside the Leech Seed on Tapu Fini, will be chipping away at Flavio's team, but it's just going to be quite slow, and uh, Flavio has the opportunity to do so much damage here uh, with the Tapu Fini now that it's got that Calm Mind boost, as well as stop Damiano doing damage in return. Uh, and oft often players will choose to trade damage. Uh, in this situation, it's definitely not a trade. It's definitely on the side of Flavio, who's dishing out all the damage and uh, not really taking any in return. Oh, as we're going to be seeing the Snarl come out from Spectre, being able to further reduce the damage output of the Palkia, bringing it now down to minus one of its special attack, whilst actually we see the Palkia uh, go ahead and move first, goes for the max break oh. and picks up the critical hit on the Tapu oh. Fini, which was hiding behind plus two special defenses. Guess what? That doesn't matter anymore because a critical hit absolutely threw that Wincon out of the window, which means that this Ferrothorn uh, can't even land a body press into the Spectre right there because of the typing immunity. And this Rotom Heat will be coming onto the field much earlier than it was expecting to. Yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, you can see Flavio's reaction there. He was not happy about that, and rightly so. Uh, that Max Quake critical hit definitely mattered there. A combination of the Snarl and the Calm Mind boosts on Tapu Fini. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely mattered. But uh, this is the game we play, and you know, the more more attacks go into the Tapu Fini, the more likely that one of them is going to get a critical hit. Uh, yep. Now, of course, Palkia, depending on how it's trained, is naturally faster. Uh, than the Rotom, and so uh, even with Snarls in play and all of that sort of good stuff uh, going on from Flavio, uh, likely that the last move of Dynamax for Palkia is going to be one of those Max Geysers bringing Rain onto the field, and uh, maybe Palkia goes down here, maybe it doesn't, uh, but more importantly, that Ferrothorn is going to be able to get a, a Leech Seed off onto uh, the Rotom and or the Spectria and just keep itself in the game. As we are going to be seeing it wanting to just not be subject to that max guys that could potentially be coming out. The Rotom Heat does go for the Protect. The Ferrothorn follows immediately after. As we are going to be seeing yet another Snarl coming out from this Spectre. Now bringing the Palkia special attack down to minus 
to so Flavio obviously recognizing he needs this uh, Rotom Heat as a win con versus the Ferrothorn or else he's not going to be able to go anywhere as we do see Max Geyser still does respectable damage even through the protect even at minus two of its special attack whilst being able to go ahead and set up the rain right now and maybe give this Ferrothorn a chance to survive an overheat even though I'm not sure it all depends on uh, damage output and uh, calps coming out from this Rotom yeah i think there's there's a few things that can happen here uh, of course the rotom just protected uh, and now is definitely under risk uh, under risk of say something like a hydro pump or uh, whatever water move that palkia is using uh, to be able to knock it out as well uh, that ferrothorn has got two boosts from max quake uh, in its special defense as well as the rain so i really do doubt that the overheat's going to do anything more than about 30 40 percent to it uh, that's definitely not somewhere that you want to be and of course uh, it's going to drop the rotom's uh special attack by two stages so unless this rotom gets a critical hit which uh, hey we've seen it before in this game already uh, could be the way that uh the that Flavio gets back into this match but yeah definitely a swing there it looks like Damiano's on the front foot as we are to be seeing the Spectra now opting to go for the Shadow Ball into the Palkia. It doesn't get any special defensive drops there. Hydro Pump is able to connect. Damiano is in a really good spot right now. Hoping to pick up the KO yes. and he does. Very well played, Damiano. Being able to bide his time and try to take advantage of the situation. He goes ahead. He gets the Leech Seed successfully onto Spectria there. And you can see Flavio is a bit distraught right now. And this might be playing back into the Tapu Fini critical hit KO but Damiano honestly for me has been playing marvelously he's been biding his time and just waiting for the opportune moment and honestly I don't see any drawbacks with how he's been playing so far no I mean you know it's it's fortunate for Damiano that he got the crit when he did but you know he, play, he played all the right moves and uh, this is how the uh, game was shook out maybe it would have been different in a different uh, in a different game but this is where we are now, and Palkia just not wanting to take any damage here, uh, nor the Ferrothorn. Uh, Damiano is just going to make sure that there's two targets for as long as possible and get all of that Leech Seed recovery. Uh, Shadow Ball looking like it's going into the Palkia. Uh, obviously, no effect there, and that Ferrothorn looks lovely and healthy. Oh, definitely is, as it is, of course, going to be sapping away the HP uh, from this Spectre. So I, I feel like I, I have really enjoyed how Damiano has been playing. Uh, there were times, of course, that Flavio did seem like he was going to gain the momentum. But I think Flavio, uh, Damiano, sorry, recognized what kind of win cons he needs to try to go for and he was basically playing the long game with his bulky pokemon on his side of the field you know the ferrothorn just sat there and uh, you know it wasn't ejected at yeah. all uh, from the play it, it, he needed to bide his time and he, he was able to do very very well he, he took it to plus four uh, thanks to the two iron defense boosts but then more importantly just started sapping hp away through the use of leech seed Exactly, and you know, there's two ways that Flavio could have played uh, the Carmine turn. Uh, could have gone for a Moonblast instead and made sure that Palkia could be knocked out rather than having the opportunity for a critical hit to be taken. But uh, this is the uh, choice that these players have made, and now we're going into game two. And the question yep. is, is, do these players actually change anything up? And, you know, I, think, I don't really think that they do. I think both of these players played a solid game, and uh, mm -hmm. I think Flavio, it's really on him to decide now whether or not to uh, just hold firm, knowing that really it was a very low chance for him to lose that match uh, with the way that he controlled everything, uh, keeping Rotom in the back for that Ferrothorn. And of course, that does give Damiano the space to, to let Ferrothorn just, you know, do what it does, get those iron defenses, uh, make sure that it can't be taken out by anything but that Rotom. Um, so the question is, is whether or not Flavio can do anything slightly different mm -hmm. to just make sure that that Rotom is there at the end this time, uh, as opposed to uh, under risk from that Palkia. 
Yeah, and I think um, from Damiano's side, of course, he was able to gain the momentum right there. He's got a cool head thinking, okay, what is the strategy to try to tackle this matchup in game two? Whilst you've got Flavio, on the other hand, uh, potentially feeling, uh, you know, I mean, that that's unfortunate, the crit, isn't it? So naturally, it will take a toll, you know, on your mental state of play uh, in a way. So he's just going to, from his side of the uh, point of view, he's going to try to stay calm and collected, whilst Damiano needs to try to force the momentum in his favor to be able to get the result he needs and he wants as the grim snarl porygon 2 will come out from damiano's side of the field we do see um the grim nay boost being copied and traced <laughs> from porygon 2 whilst of course facing the same lead in that being soldier leon spectra yeah, I do like this adjustment here from uh, Damiano, uh, getting those potential pranks to taunts or uh, other moves there that Grimmsnarl can offer. Uh, Grimmsnarl known for using a fairy move rather than an dark type move, so not going to be potentially providing too much offensive pressure uh, in this situation, um, but does have access to Sucker Punch potentially, so uh, could be doing a little bit of work against that Spectre, certainly that Solgaleo, but you don't want to be activating the weakness policy too early if you can avoid it um but we're seeing the same lead from flavio here he's probably mm -hmm. going to be quite content to get that dynamax which seems to be coming out from flavio's side of the field you can see the heavy ball there uh, coming out that solgaleo going big and uh, likely going to be launching out some more huge attacks yeah but it's uh, quite interesting because uh we saw that it's not enough to pick up a KO on the Porygon 2, so this might actually invite the potential of uh, this actually be going into the Grim Snarl, but then it would give a free uh, access entry for the Ferrothorn, as we do see Reflect being set up from the Grim Snarl. Bulldoze does come out from this Spectre on Flavio's side, being able to proc once again in the same similar fashion as Game 1, the weakness policy on this Soul Deleo, whilst dropping the speed of both the Grim Snarl and the Porygon 2, and we do see the max steel spike does actually target the grim snarl this turn round it wants mm. to get rid of it but this does like i did just mention kind of invite the ferrothorn in doesn't it in this situation to try to get iron defense boost going well it certainly does and i think you know it's the same thing that we saw happening in the last game uh, flavio really content to just launch out some big attacks and just uh uh, really just attack uh, Damiano's team, everything except for that Ferrothorn. Of course, uh, Ferrothorn, when it's not supported by its team, is susceptible to a lot of uh, a lot of Pokemon, uh, really as long as they're holding a fire attack. And uh, this is what, what Flavio is trying to achieve in this, in this matchup. Of course, mm -hmm. Damiano is trying to do enough uh, so that he doesn't get left with a Ferrothorn against something that he doesn't like. And of course, as we said uh, again and again, it's that Rotom Heat that we're targeting. Uh, yeah. Ferrothorn does indeed come in and yeah, likely to set up some Leech Seeds, set up some Iron Defenses. Uh, not in any rush to do so because it's not really threatened for a KO. Uh, mm -hmm. In the meantime, Solgaleo can just keep uh, attacking with Max Quakes and Max Steel Spikes. And Flavio has two turns to do this, so could be Spectria gets a, a will o -Wisp buff like last time, make sure Ferrothorn is doing as little damage as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, he does have the opportunity now to swap into his Tapu Fini, potentially, um, and get some boosts going on that. Uh, so he doesn't need, feel the need to set up those Calm Mines that he had to in the last game. Yeah. Uh, just get those defensive boosts from Solgaleo's Dynamax moves. As we're going to be seeing, the Ferrothorn actually opting for Leech Seed and does target down the Spectrius lot in case the break potential focus sash as the foul play does deal a lot of respectable damage onto the Sol Galeo, um, which is at plus two attack and plus one defense. But more importantly, it's uh, actually not able to deal as much as you would have expected thanks to that reflect Damiano was able to skillfully mm. go ahead and set up during turn one, just barely making a two hit KO on the board on two. And the Will-O-Wisp is gonna be able to successfully land and burn this Ferrothorn right now. So Damiano, once again, Again, playing the slow game but in this situation i feel like porygon 2 is not weak enough as it was in game one so it's in a better position i think it is i think that's a slightly uh, incorrect targeting from uh, flavio there i'd like to see since we knew foul play was a move the move of choice on porygon i'd like to see the will -O going first into the porygon uh, and then into the ferrothorn uh, the spectre mm -hmm. is not likely to be knocked out anytime soon and it's not likely that Damiano is going to be adjusting his board position. So we'd like to see the Solgaleo be kept uh, in a, a little bit better nick. 
Uh, even yeah. though it is boosting up its defenses, going to be reducing the damage from foul play on Porygon 2. It would be nicer, nicer to see you know, that preservation there for Solgaleo to just keep on attacking and doing what it's doing so well with that weakness policy boost. As the Leech Seed is going to be coming out from the Ferrothorn, does successfully land onto the Soul Galeo, will be able to get some residual HP recovery over time. And talk about recovery, Porygon 2 goes for that recover, able to get straight back up, fill up the tank of HP, and uh, only for it to be taken back down <laughs> to pretty much the same exact spot as it was previously, uh, thanks to that max steel spike coming out from the plus two attack boosted Soul Galeo, as the will o -Wisp now targets the poured on too so maybe flavio wanting to just try to get that residual damage over time as best as possible to try to whittle down poured on two's hp yeah certainly there's gonna be a point where you know trick room is ending uh, and the Solgaleo is going to get two attacks in a row. Uh, fortunately for Damiano, it's not going to be two max moves in a row, so likely that the Porygon is going to be able to survive that. Uh, now the Spectre is not really going to be offering too much in the way of uh, value on this board position. Obviously, isn't able to uh, hit the Porygon 2 with anything other than a Snarl, and Snarl doesn't really... <laughs> isn't really the, the move that's known for doing lots and lots of damage. Uh, no. But Shadow Ball could be used to whittle down a little bit of health from that Ferrothorn, but with those two Leech Seeds in play, uh, Ferrothorn mm -hmm. really is just going to be recovering back all of the health that he... Uh, yeah. that, that any health that Flavio can do. So I'd like to see that Spectria come out of the field, uh, reset one of the Leech Seeds, maybe bring in something that offers a little bit more value, like that Tapu Fini, um, and see what can be done there to really advance Flavio's board state and force that end game where you have that Palkia on the field and uh, Flavio has the ability to knock out that Palkia uh, to pave the way for Rotom Heat to finish off the game. Oh, and the Tapu Fini does indeed switch in right now, bringing the Mist Terrain on the field right now when Flavio uh, so decides and wants it to, because obviously we had seen the Will-O-Wisps uh, being able to successfully land the previous two turns. As Iron Defense, though, comes out from that Ferrothorn, the Spectre, uh, Leech Seed, HP recovery access is no longer a situation. This Ferrothorn just wants to start boosting up its defenses to set it up for the end game. As Recover comes out from Porygon 2, we'll be able to get that HP backwards as Sun Steel Strike comes out from the Soul Delay. Look at this amazing animation. Goes <laughs> into the Porygon 2 and isn't unfortunately able to uh, get it within two hit KO range as it would have with the Max Steel Spike Dynamax boosted. And you're able to see there a bit of more HP recovery being sapped away from Soul Delay and powered into that Ferrothorn. Yeah, that, that uh, will of chip taking it down to just below 50%. So uh, we're going to see some progress eventually, um, but it's not going to be too quick. Uh, Tapu Fini coming onto the field, definitely a good play. Uh, Flavio providing a little bit more presence on the board. And uh, mm -hmm. certainly if the Porygon 2 recovers, I think this is the last turn of Trick Room. Uh, now we get that situation where Solgaleo and Tapu Fini can attack twice in a row. We've seen that that's definitely going to do more than 50% each time. Uh, mm -hmm. So great position for Flavio to be in of course uh Tapu Fini also hitting Ooh. on the defense that where that hasn't been boosted by that reflect either but the leech seed actually missed on the Tapu Fini that could have been quite detrimental for Damiano to just get that residual damage over time whilst taking away the leftovers recovery from the Tapu Fini as foul play did target into the Sol de Leo. wasn't enough to pick up a KO thanks to all of those defensive boosts gained from the max steel spikes on the Sol de Leo, as it's going to be going for the sun steel strike into Porygon 2 fails to pick up a KO as I don't think it is within range for the burn to be able to finish up the job yeah and that uh Ferrothorn getting a little bit more uh leech seed recovery there uh still at full hp so only the burn gonna be there and uh, you're absolutely right costa that, that porygon 2 is not going to be finished off from the burn but i think i just saw that the trick room was indeed ending that turn so it yep. uh, doesn't matter what attack that is going to be launching into that porygon 2 uh definitely going to be picking up the knockout uh maybe like to see the solgaleo switch out here uh, Damiano needs to do something with his uh, uh, Porygon, maybe. Uh, could be just content to let it uh, get knocked out and bring the um, 
uh, bring the Palkia in. Uh, could be a good option here to maybe try to knock out that Solgaleo with the body press uh, and just force that Rotom Heat out. Ooh, Rock Slide though, coming out from the Sol Galeo, does successfully land on both targets, being able to pick up a KO onto the Porygon 2, hoping for a flinch chance on the Ferrothorn, as we're going to be seeing another Calm Mind from the Tapu Fini. Flavio recognizing his uh, win con in this situation, as Damiano still does have Dynamax available from his side of the field, and he's able to successfully get the Leech Seed uh, going, landing on the Tapu Fini. So, Ferrothorn... Uh, essentially um digging in its uh three hooves into the ground <laughs> as we speak not able to pick up the ko <laughs> on soldier layer surviving on one oh, wow. hp one very crucial hp point yeah that's uh, a very true very well trained lion there uh, surviving on one hp uh fairly crucial damiano definitely didn't want to see that um, and would have really liked for a, another Pokemon to be coming out. We did see Protect from Palkia in the last game, so, uh, you know, Damiano can make sure that he, uh, you know, has the opportunity to uh, wait this out and make sure that Solgaleo is leaving the field. Of course, Spectre, though, can come in straight away. So, you know, in, t in terms of uh, where we are from last game, we've seen two Calm Minds on the Tapu Fini. Uh, mm -hmm. The Spectre is likely to enter the field with that Snarl very soon. We're hitting the same... Uh, sort of space that we saw in the last game where uh, really it comes down to whether this Palkia can get the critical hit on the Tapu Fini uh, in order to get as much damage as possible, uh, potentially pick up the knockout or at least uh, knock it into range in combination with a little bit of chip from Leech Seed. Uh, and that's where we're really sitting now. Um, so we do indeed see that Palkia going for the Protect here. Oh, as uh, going for the Protect, not actually opting to go for the Dynamax, biding its time as Rock Slide will be coming out from the Soul Deleo and only landing on the Ferrothorn, hoping potentially to even get a flinch yet again. Moonblast, though, goes into that Protect from the Palkia. And um, Body Press does actually do respectable damage, even when burned onto a Pokemon that does resist uh, fighting type uh, with, of course, the Teferi typing. Yeah, you know, those iron, iron defenses doing a little bit of work here to make sure that Ferrothorn is still, uh, let's say, relevant in in terms of its damage output. Uh, so Ferrothorn going to be uh, just clawing that one health back uh, from Solgaleo that it missed out from the last round. Uh, a little bit more from Tapu Fini, of course, which is re restoring its own health from the leftovers. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Tapu Fini is really trying to uh, target down that Palkia. Uh, Damiano... Yeah. With his Ferrothorn is trying to chip out, chip away at that uh, Tapu Fini so that, uh, you know, when Palkia likely next turn goes for that uh, Dynamax form, goes for mm -hmm. the Max Quake again into the Tapu Fini, uh, he's got the best chance, uh, if a critical hit does land, uh, to yeah. be picking up the knockout. Uh, and that's really, what, that's really what this game comes down to again. Uh, unfortunately yeah. for Damiano, not a very high chance. He got it in game one. If he gets it in game two, it'll be a miracle. Um, but stranger things have happened. This is VGC and Spectre yeah. on the field. Um, you know, coming in for uh, Flavio, we're seeing exactly the same position as we did last game. Uh, we're just going to see some snarls. A uh, mm -hmm. few other little bits of bits and pieces of Moonblast and such. I think, you know, difference here being that Flavio has already set up. So he's a little bit further forward than he was before. Yeah. Um, the Palkia came in the last time. So uh, really less chances for Damiano to... Uh, get that Max Quake uh, critical hit off onto the Tapu Fini. Oh, and we are going to be seeing Damiano go for the Dynamax Gamble right now, hoping to be able to somehow pick up a KO onto this Tapu Fini, if, of course, it doesn't go for Protect, because right now it is subject to Snarl special attack drops, uh, further making his uh, strategy even harder, as Snarl does connect on both Ferrothorn and Palkia. No Protect does get a critical hit on the Palkia for that tiny bit of damage output, because why not? as um, uh, Tapu Fini hasn't <laughs> actually protected and will be uh, f open to uh, taking this Max Quake damage, which no, it does not. 
crit, <laughs> which is uh, what could have really uh, put uh, the game even more forward for Damiano. Does get the special defense boost, though, but against this plus two calm-minded Tapafini, wow, that does a lot of damage from the Moonblast, whilst the Ferrothorn is just going to be going ahead and get the Leech Seed going on the Spectre. So I feel like the overheat uh, from the Rotom waiting in the back should not pick up the KO onto Ferrothorn if it is within the rain uh, weather situation. So I think it's very, very close with how both these players fully understand what needs to be done for each of their strategies. Yeah, well, we see uh, how much damage the Moonblast from Tapu Fini did to that Palkia. Uh, definitely not going to be enough to pick up the knockout again, and likely we're going to see another Max Quake going into Tapu Fini. So uh, let's see if Damiano can get the critical hit in uh, try number two, let's say. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, we saw how little damage that Tapu Fini took and, you know, eventually it will be knocked out from a combination of attacks from uh, the uh, Ferrothorn and as well as the Leech Seed. So, mm -hmm. you know, Ferrothorn definitely going to survive for a while, uh, but the question is, is what's going to happen when that Rotom hits the field? Uh, as you yeah. mentioned earlier, the special defense boost from the Max Quake will stop the overheat from knocking out Uh, from knocking out the Ferrothorn, yes, exactly, so... Quite often sporting... Uh... Apologies, I think we've got some technical difficulties. Ben, are you with us? Uh, I'm not uh, sure if you are, but I'll just try I... to go through with um, the conversation right now. So we see the Spectre trying to go for the um, Snarl, I think, uh, but uh, not being able to get it as the uh, Palkia actually went for Max Guard, being able to uh, save itself against this Moonblast as well from the Palkia, and more importantly, gets another Iron Defense boost off onto this Ferrothorn right now. So starting to stack up and maybe trying to bide time a bit but i feel like damiano might be forced to go for the max geyser in order to potentially set up the rain over on his side of the field yeah i think that's a, a little bit of a strange play going for a max guard on that turn uh, definitely the only way that damiano really has to break through this tapu finny uh, maybe he's thinking with another iron defense he would be able to uh, maybe launch a max quake into uh, the Tapu Fini or maybe a Max Geyser. Uh, finish off with a body press and just wait for Leech Seed to do what Leech Seed does. Um, but definitely, definitely want to be taking as many opportunities as you can if you're Damiano to uh, really break through uh, that uh, Tapu Fini. Yeah, indeed, as we are going to be going ahead and seeing the special defense drop yet again from the Snarl onto the Palkia as Max Geyser does come out and target down the Spectre, being able to actually pick up the KO um, whilst being able to set up the rain. And you can see the in-game timer right there indicating three minutes of uh, play remain on the field as uh, Moonblast, though, will be enough to pick up the KO onto the Palkia, leaving this Ferrothorn uh, on its own, two versus one against Tapafini, which, to be fair, it is getting Leech Seed recovery off from. But um, then, of course, it is up against the Rotom Heat. But it's not over, to be honest, because I still feel like this could somehow maybe be winnable from Damiano. It certainly could be. Uh, Overheat's not the most accurate move in the game. Um, and, of course, we have the uh, three-minute timer. Uh, for this game just popped up on the screen so uh, there is limited time left but that does really fall in Flavio's favor uh, with all of these uh, effects going on the leech seed the burns and uh, and all of the animations from these turns likely that Flavio can just wait out the clock uh, have more Pokemon in his side of the field uh, and be able to uh, clutch out the game of course uh, you know the overheat is not going to be doing lots and lots of damage for from uh, Flavio's side of the field onto that Ferrothorn, but, uh, you know, if he can just wait out the uh, timer, that's a definite win condition, uh, and a win condition that can't be uh, taken out by a critical hit. Yeah, as, of course, two versus one right now, we do see, of course, the timer going down. Tapafini opting to go for Protect on its side of the field, one preserve a bit of its HP as much as possible as Nasty Plot comes up from the Rotom Heat, obviously recognizing the special defense boost that the Ferrothorn uh, does currently have, as well as the rain, but the Tapafini is completely ignored. There is no body press going into that slot. Damiano did go ahead and uh, fully focus on getting the Leech Seed recovery and HP sapping from from the roads on heat. 
Yeah, and this is a good play here from Damiano. Uh, also a good play from Flavio. Uh, we're seeing going into sort of lo uh, later turns here. Uh, the Tapu Fini is likely to eventually go down. You know, if there was infinite time in this game, uh, the Ferrofawn could have potentially won. Uh, but the Nazi plot from Rotom, uh, assuming that the uh, Leech Seed is going to... Uh, sorry, the Overheat is going to hit into the Ferrofawn, uh, yep. likely to be... Uh, Flavio's game. A uh, body press is going to have to go into the Tapu Fini this turn. And Overheat does land here. Uh, oh. Just pick up the knockout as well. And uh, not even a critical hit. So that boost in special attack was absolutely crucial for Flavio. Uh, taking this from uh, 1 0 down to 1 to 1. I don't think I'm, uh, I'm not sure if you realize, Ben, but did you actually see the your time on Flavio's side? I think he, he had 12 seconds remaining up until he automatically lost that. So literally coming down to the wire. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the, the players can't see. Can, can the players see each other's times? I, I forget. Uh, if they could, uh, definitely one of the things that... Uh, I, Damiano would have been going for, uh, but either mm. way, that that was a long, long game, and Flavio took his time in places. And um, but you know that's how the uh, game plays out. And now we're going into game three. Oh my lord! It's felt like this is a best of five instead of best of three. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what goes into game three. Of course, we have uh, this uh, kind of strategy from Damiano's side, uh, absolutely going for bulk and kind of stall over time, and just mainly use that ferrothorn to be able to obviously get recoveries iron defense boosts which it has been doing very well so far i feel like damiano um might have maybe not needed um the crit 100 in game one but he definitely needed it in game two i felt as um i'm not sure how this is gonna pan out if he could because I feel like Flavio did quite well in game two, being able to just bide his own time and yeah. um, actually uh, start whittling down uh, Damiano's Pokemon over time to the point where it was just left with Ferrothorn and Palkia. It certainly was. And I think, you know, really what I want to see from Damiano this, this game is to have some way to deal with that Spectria Solgaleo lead um, that has done so much work Obviously, with a bulldoze, it's very hard. Urshifu uh, could potentially outspeed the Solgaleo, depending on how they're trained. Uh, but with that bulldoze activating the weakness policy, it's very difficult for Damiano to do something uh, meaningful uh, in his uh, offense while being able to still attack and take the attacks from the uh, Solgaleo. Of course, the Solgaleo, uh, so the Urshifu, if it's holding that focus sash, I will have it broken straight away. Yeah, as we are actually going to be seeing the Ferrothorn uh, coming out as a lead with the Grimmsnarl on Damiano's side against, yet again, the same lead from Flavio's side, being that Sol Galeo and the Spectre. Certainly, and yeah, we could see some reflect again, but I, I, I would really like to see something where this Sol Galeo gets taken out a little bit faster. Uh, Grimmsnarl, probably not the Pokemon that you'd like to see doing that uh, particular role, but uh, maybe a Sucker Punch uh, could be something that's worthwhile here. I uh, could also go into the Spectria if the Spectria decides to opt for Bulldoze uh, this turn and, uh, you know, maybe could uh, do a little bit of uh, damage. Solgaleo's not really too effective against uh, Ferrothorn uh, once mm -hmm. he gets some Iron Defenses in play. So maybe remove that Spectria from play, uh, remove the ability for it to Will-O-Wisp. Uh, yeah. Could be something that's quite good for Damiano to go for this game. As we are going to be seeing the Sol Galeo opting yet again for the Dynamax right now. As um, I feel like it's just going to be the same old situation that we've been seeing. The Bulldoze and Weakness Policy proc. As uh, Grimstar is actually going to be setting up Reflect right now. So Damiano wanting to try to stack up his own boost from his side of the field. Whilst Flavio is trying to go ahead and force the situation. But I think that might have been... Oh my lord, I'm not sure if that was a Will-O-Wisp actually hoping to be able to land on the Ferrothorn but missed as the Max Steel Spike is able to go into the Grim Snarl slot, pick up a KO whilst going ahead and getting that defensive boost. So uh, Damiana's Ferrothorn being quite evasive there, not what you'd expect from a Ferrothorn whilst being able to plant a lead or should I say a seed or two over on Solgaleo right now for HP recovery. 
Yeah, Feral Fawn's firmly rooted in position here. Uh, not not one for dodging, but uh, apparently Spectre, uh, maybe it needs to go to Specsavers or, or something. Maybe that's a joke for the UK. Uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe it needs to go and get some glasses. Let's go for that. Uh, Porygon 2, though, coming in for the Grimmsnarl, and of course, uh, Grimmsnarl getting knocked out from the uh, Max Steel Spike from Solgaleo. Not very difficult to uh, knock out a Grimmsnarl with such a powerful steel type pokemon on your side of the field uh the winner is a little bit a little bit disappointing but hey you know this spectre has lasted all game at each all three times uh so uh, gonna be a lot of opportunities for spectre to just go for another will o wisp uh, not really uh, going to be making too much impact in the game certainly not with that porygon 2 coming in uh, there's not too many things that uh porygon can really uh, do that grims uh, Spectria worries about. As we're going to be seeing Ferrothorn actually opt to go for Protect. Uh, Spectria does go for the Bulldoze, wanting to get that boost on the uh, Sol Deleo. This turn round, not actually following suit in the previous uh, patterns that Flavia has been doing on turn one, as the Max Steel Spike will be targeting this Porygon 2. But look at that Reflect coming into play there, uh, guaranteeing a rough two hit KO instead of a, um, or, I mean, a rough two to three KO, should I say, instead of a guaranteed to a KO as the trick room will be set up over on Damiano's side and he's going to be trying to go ahead and profit as much as he can from this momentum. The fact that he didn't get burnt is really good in general for HP and damage output perhaps. No, certainly and uh, the trouble is is that even the reflect coming up from Damiano really isn't doing enough. You know, if you saw Porygon 2 taking maybe 40% uh, yeah. not being too hit KO'd, it would be a brilliant position but I feel like a sucker punch would have been more valuable coming out and doing a little bit of damage to that Solgaleo um, rather than the Reflect. I feel like, you know, that Solgaleo with its weakness policy is doing just too much damage and uh, could be take, using the time to do something more valuable. Uh, mm -hmm. But of course, Flavio now uh, in Trick Room, going to be going, his Pokemon are going to be going last and Damiono's are going to be going first. But it's only that foul play that we've seen that, that really makes an impact. And of course, uh, Palkia Ooh. coming in now. Uh, Flavio doing a little bit of celebrating here. It looks like he could have predicted that switch. A little bit of a dance there as we're going to be seeing Porygon 2 up to go for recover. So it kind of leaves the question to what Flavio is celebrating uh, with what he actually went for. He did go for the Max Quake. It does target the Palkia, does deal a lot of damage, but let's not forget the Reflect is in play, but it does deal a lot of HP from a Palkia that perhaps might have been wanting to try to save a bit of it. Maybe expecting a Will-O-Wisp, but no, the Shadow ball double up we're starting to see why he was celebrating as the palkia is just lee is just left with a tiny bit of hp that is able to uh, slightly recover due to the leech seed but oh my lord the ferrothorn is off the field ben it certainly is and uh, this is what i was thinking about last game i didn't quite mention is that palkia with that leech seed recovery could be quite a nice thing to have on the field uh, <laughs> yeah, the Solgaleo and Spectra combo didn't quite pick up the knockout though, uh, so not quite the uh, not quite worthy of a, a dance at this stage. Uh, would have been nice for that to be knocked out, and it would have been absolutely game over, uh, game yeah. two, Flavio. Uh, but definitely still an uphill battle for Damiano. We've got Protect uh, able to be put into play here, of course, from that Palkia, get a little bit more recovery, and might be able to then uh, survive some attacks, but. Porygon 2 needs to really go on the offensive and take put some damage onto that Solgaleo in order for that to happen. And of course, we did see just a Max Quake uh, do all of that damage to Palkia Ooh. and be able to increase its bulk as well. So uh, yeah, Solgaleo though, deciding to take away all of those boosts that it worked so hard to get up uh, and bring in Tapu Fini instead. Yeah, because it doesn't want this Palkia to just start recovering HP from that Leech Seed. Mm. As we did see the da Damiano actually go for Protect on Palkia, hoping to get a bit of that HP back. As Foul Play actually goes into the Tapu Fini, which was previously that Sword de Leo. As the Shadow Ball from Spectre was hoping to pick off and uh, get a KO, maybe a Grim Nade boost on the Palkia, but obviously wasn't able to do so. No, certainly not, and uh, likelihood we, is we're going to see that Ferrothorn come straight back in for the Palkia. Uh, definitely a Pokemon that Damiano wants to be preserving. 
Um, and of course, as you said, Costin, no more Leech Seed recovery coming out there, so Palkia are going to be stuck at that low health. And certainly yeah. within range of a Shadow Ball, based on the damage that we saw last time, uh, Porygon 2 is going to be sitting nice and pretty, uh, probably going to be have the opportunity to uh, knock out, or maybe at least do a little bit of damage to that Spectria. Um, yeah. It has got a defense boost, so not going to be doing as much damage as you like, but you know, all of that damage does add up in the end game. Definitely does, as we're going to be seeing the Palkia actually switch out now for the Ferrothorn coming back onto the field as it, 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 uh, sorry, as an eerie impulse, apologies, does go into the Spectre, being able to bring it down to minus two of its special attack. Moonblast doing respectable damage onto the Ferrothorn, uh, does Ooh. get a special attack uh, drop, but I don't think that matters, of course, as uh, the Ferrothorn definitely isn't offensive in any way, as the Shadow Ball will be targeting down into it, but of course, it will be getting a bit of HP recovery yet again in good styled fashion for Ferrothorn. Yeah, certainly. Uh, in, and we're seeing Damiano taking quite a lot of damage or, or racking up quite a lot of damage on all of the Pokemon that he has left. Uh, the one disadvantage of bringing that Grimmsnarl in in the lead against Solgaleo, uh, yeah, okay, you get the Reflect and you reduce the damage on all of your other Pokemon for a while. And uh, that's certainly been significant. That Palkia would have definitely gone down to the double target on the switch in uh, mm -hmm. if the Reflect wasn't in play. Uh, but of course, the uh, now we see the downside, which is that only one Pokemon can switch at a time. Yep. As we're going to be seeing the Rotom Heat now switching in for the Tapu Fini, trying to maybe get ahead of the game in uh, trying to threaten this Ferrothorn, which has actually gone for the Iron Defense, being able to get the plus two yet again on the Elements Defense side of things. Foul play, not being able to deal as much uh, damage as you'd expect onto this Spectre, which is free to go for the Shadow Ball now into the Ferrothorn, dealing roughly a one-fourth amount of damage onto it but of course, it is going to be recovering over time. So Flavia does actually like the Rotom versus Ferrothorn situation now, though. Certainly does. And, uh, you know, there's an opportunity here for the Palkia to come in. Uh, but at some point, uh, it's got to come in, uh, potentially uh, take an attack. And it's not really uh, looking too hot on being able to take any of the attacks that are on the field. Uh, that Shadow Ball, it could probably uh, be able to deal with as it's been uh, Spectre has had its special attack dropped. Uh, but it's certainly not going to want to take a Thunderbolt from the Rotom Heat. Uh, so, got to be very careful if you're Damiano, how you bring the Palkia in to pressure that Rotom. Uh, and if you do, whether you've got, uh, you can do it in such a way uh, that it doesn't have to take an attack from Spectre at first. But it is actually going to be opting to go for Protect and wants a bit of HP recovery whilst not being subject to that overheat as Spectre does move first now, goes to for the Snarl, will be landing on Porygon 2, being able to bring it down to minus one of its special attack. Whilst the, uh, the, uh, the Rotom Heat, sorry, did try to target down that Ferrothorn, wasn't able to do so whilst Porygon 2 was very safe to get that Trick Room up and going for Damiano's side. Yeah, certainly. I, you know, I actually think this benefits Flavio a little bit more. Uh, if the Palkia comes in, it's very possible that the uh, Palkia is actually faster than the Rotom. I think we saw that in the previous game um, yeah. and is able to move first. And so uh, what Damiano's done is uh, reverse the uh, dimensions. He's probably going to uh, have Porygon and Ferrothorn on the field or at least try to have that for as long as possible but at some point that ferrothorn is going to have to take an overheat could be this turn uh, and so palkia is going to have to come in and when palkia comes in if it's slower than the uh rotom under the trick room condition it will just be knocked out by a thunderbolt Oh, but it actually goes for the body press right now. Maybe hoping to try to pick up a cheeky KO as the eerie impulse is going to be focused down on the Rotom 2. Being able to bring it down to minus two of its special attack. Hoping for overheat miss, but it does not miss. And it targets the Ferrothorn and it does pick up the KO. So not looking positive at all for Damiano. I think he needed to rely on an overheat miss in that scenario. As the Spectre will be trying to go for Shadow Ball, but will, of course... Uh, uh, be met with that immunity normal typing of Porygon 2. Yeah, I think the uh, Tapu Fini is still sitting in the back uh, for uh, Flavio, uh, if memory serves. Certainly the Solgaleo is, uh, and that's probably going to be enough to uh, for Flavio to be able to just whittle down a combination of this uh, Palkia and the Porygon 2 
uh, and really take the match. Yeah, 100% as of course. Um, I think Flavio was just able to just capitalize over time. We did see a couple of switch outs uh, from the Sol Galeo, for example, where of course it was uh, giving up on all of its stat boosts, but in return of not allowing any further Leech Seed uh, HP recovery from Damiano's side. But Alki, unfortunately, it's just at such a small uh, HP range that's remaining for it. It's, I don't think it's going to be able to do much now that Ferrothorn is done and out, unless this is going to be a uh, Duck Duck Dynamax from the Porygon 2, <laughs> uh, which I feel like might make sense, but no, it is the Palkia at its very little HP range. Yeah, uh, Palkia coming into its Dynamax form and I uh, gonna get double health, health, its health back and uh, maybe will survive an attack from the Rotom, certainly with two Ooh. minus stages, yeah. or four minus stages, should I say, of special attack now. Uh, replying with Max, guys, are definitely gonna be enough to pick up the KO on nice. the Oh Rotom. no! Actually, going into the Spectria, uh, Spectria is able to uh, survive the attack and uh, yeah, Spectre replying with a Shadow Ball that isn't enough to pick up the knockout here. Wow, well played. Of course, those eerie impulses are really uh, coming out and uh, providing so much work from before on the Porygon to being able to target both the Spectre and the Rotom Heat, allowing this Palkia to actually survive. This is still very, I don't know, I think Damiano's is trying his best to try to claw back in this scenario. Tapafini though does come in onto the field whilst bringing along its misty terrain. So I feel like Damiano just needs to break this Tapafini somehow and i feel like it's gonna be very tough as the max guard comes out from the palkia shadow ball tries to pick it off as best as it can but is met with the max guard whilst we are gonna be seeing Porygon to go for the foul play ko actually onto the spectrum but in this scenario i feel like unfortunately damiano doesn't have enough resources to kind of uh, handle this tapu fini yeah we see uh what Flavio decides to bring out onto the field. It is going to be that Solvaleo. Uh, depending on how these two are trained, uh, will depend on which Pokemon goes first, whether it's that Palkia or that Solvaleo. But suffice it to say, if the Solvaleo goes first, that Palkia definitely going to be knocked out this turn. Uh, yeah. Porygon does have the ability to go for foul play, which is great for dealing with the Solvaleo. And mm -hmm. almost certain that that Solvaleo is going to go down and uh, does attack first indeed and pick up the knockout. So. Uh, yeah, but the, the the trouble is in this situation for Damiano is foul play is great against Solgaleo, but not so great against Tapu Fini. Yeah, definitely isn't as Tapu Fini is just going to be opting to go for the Calm Mind right now. And um, in that scenario, I feel like the reversal of Trick Room from Damiano's side might have been in anticipation of um, this. I don't know, the speed tiering perhaps, and maybe hoping Palkia can try to outspeed outside of Trick Room. But talking about Trick Room, Porygon 2 just went ahead and set it up on its lonely uh, self right now on its side of the field as um, Damiano is just going to be going ahead and uh, thinking this through. Um, and actually, I don't I don't see a way back in all honesty. It's three versus one. Porygon 2 just doesn't have any damage output at the moment. No, it really, it really doesn't. And... Uh... Yeah, well, I mean, the only thing that we've got left, I just noticed the your time on Flavio's side of the field, so uh, Porygon 2 is known for being able to stick around and uh, certainly going to be able to do that with that eerie impulse. He could be going for a condition where uh, he Ooh. wins on Flavio running out of his time for the match, and certainly while Trick Room's in effect and that eerie impulse can keep lowering the special attack of the Tapu Fini, uh, oh, definitely could be seeing that win con coming. Uh, oh my god, I just saw it. Putting in his moves really quickly now. <laughs> I actually just saw it. I didn't even notice it. And oh my god, I think there is a situation where Damiano could perhaps win. <laughs> Foul play goes into the Red Tom Heat. Oh my lord, I feel the hype in the air as uh, Calm Mind comes out from Tapu Fini. We'll be allowing it to go up to, I believe, plus two right now. Hoping to try to get rid of um, this Porygon 2. But let's not forget, Eerie Impulse did land onto the Tapu Fini. So Damiano doing quite well in trying to find any sort of win condition he can. Yes, yeah, certainly, and uh, yeah, it will also depend on how many, how much overall game time is in play. Uh, Eerie impulse coming again from the Oregon, but this time into the Rotom. So uh, trying to make sure that it stays at uh, high enough health to live the next attacks. But Flavius, he's right through that. Goes for the nasty plot. 
uh, brings its special attack right back up and uh, yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult but at some point of course that trick room's gonna end uh, and both this rotom and tapu finny if they keep boosting are gonna be able to go first Definitely, as we are going to be seeing the recover right now. So wanting to maybe guarantee a uh, easy trick room setup for future turns as Moonblast is just going to be used from Flavio's side to try to focus down, whittle away the HP on this Porygon 2 whilst the Rotom is going to be setting up its nasty plots. And we do see the timer there for game time uh, indicating three minutes remaining. But all Damiano needs to try to do is get rid of Flavio's Your Timer, which is now set down to 30 one at this rate and this is this is looking to be very close oh right God. now then yeah it really is it really is uh yeah we see the rotom here going first so trick room is definitely owned it uh a nasty plot and a can't mind likely gonna see a recover coming from the porygon too uh, yeah i mean uh now it's down to flavio he's gonna pick his next moves uh which Whoa. will probably be offensive moves once he picks those all he has to do is mash the select button as fast as he can to keep yeah. that your time going uh, he'll be aware of that um, and that three minutes of game time is going to be going in flavio's favor of course uh that being three pokemon oh. to two with Solgaleo in the back but that thunderbolt did so much damage accompanied by the moonblast picks up the ko and is gonna be going ahead and cementing flavio's position in the top cut access vip straight into tomorrow's event <laughs> he certainly is and uh, that was such a good game uh real real, real mastery coming out from flavio here uh, but also a little bit of a team matchup um going on with flavio being able to just have that advantage certainly in the early game and being able to convert that to the mid and end game there wasn't really too many ways for damiano to uh to act and of course that palkia switching game three coming in was one of the ways that he had in his tank to uh try to change up the dynamic of the turn get that yeah. fast defensive pokemon in launching out big attacks with a little bit of lychee recovery i uh, could have been very very good but uh flavio just made the right move at the right time uh, in order to stop that so yeah well played to both players they both did as much as they could uh but in the end as you say costa it is going to be flavio going into the top eight and commiserations to Daz damiano 100%, like you said as well, well played to both of these players trying to go ahead to get whatever win con they can. And uh, huge props as well to Damiano, trying his best. Obviously, Flavio being able to just get, have that tiny bit more to be able to bring and uh, guarantee that win. But of course, that will be the end of this stream. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in today. We've absolutely loved your support, and we are hoping to see you here tomorrow as well. Once again, one 30 p.m utc time so go ahead expect some very hype very spicy matches coming on the field we will be releasing the brackets as soon as we possibly can if not tonight it definitely will be in the morning but i would expect victory road to be organizing it for tonight but anyways that's all from us thank you so much to both victory road as well as the other two casters that took part today to all you lovely people at home and we're wishing you a very lovely night and catch you tomorrow